This is the same Hooke's Law spring with a box sitting on top. In this picture, a 5 kilogram box sits on top of the spring and the length of the spring is 0.2 meters. In this picture, it shows that when the box sitting on top is 8 kilograms, the length of the spring is 0.17 meters. What is the spring constant K of the spring? Since the box is sitting on top, that means the box is at rest and stays at rest. That means the acceleration of the box is zero. So the information given is that the acceleration of the box is zero. The box is in equilibrium. The net force is zero. So we should draw the force diagram for the forces on the box. It doesn't matter which box you use. Let's see, if I draw the force diagram of this one, I have mg, the box is touching the spring, so the spring's restoring force pushes on the box upward. The force from the spring goes upward, and since it's a Hooke's Law spring, this force equals to kx. That means uh, the net force is zero, the upward force and downward force, they are equal, so mg equals to kx. If I use the 8 kilogram box, the mg will be 80, and that will be k times 0.17, and this will give me a k that's 471. But if I use that box, I'm going to have a mg that's 50, that's k times 0.2, and this one gives me the k equals to 250, but that's the same spring. so the k should not be different. So what do you think it went wrong? The x in this equation, the f equals kx, the x is the stretched or compressed amount, not the total length of the springs. We don't know the original length of the springs, but the point 2 is not the compressed amount. These are not compressed amount. That's why this is uh, incorrect. Because we don't know the original length of the spring, so it's not obvious how much the compression is for each case. But we can say the original length is L, and then we can write out two equations, and so we can use L minus 0.17 and L minus 0.2 for the compressed amount. We have two equations with two unknowns, k and the l. We'll be able to solve for both of those. Now, another way to do this is, luckily, the f equals to kx is a linear equation. It's because the k is a constant. The k is the same for the same spring. So I can do the change in this will be delta F and uh, the delta kx, since k is a constant, I can take the k out and so there's only the delta x. Which means uh, if I start with 5 kilogram on top of the spring, I can add 3 more kilograms and then the spring will compress a extra amount. When I change and add extra forces, I'll get extra compression. So what I can do is, uh, the delta F is, uh, I used to have 50 newtons, now it's 80 newtons. The extra force is uh, 80 minus 50, and that equals to the spring constant times the extra compression. The extra compression would be 0.2 minus 0.17. So this will be 30 equals to k times 0.03. So the spring constant is 1,000. And what is the unit for spring constant? It is newtons per meter. Because it's a newtons equals to spring constant times meters. So that's what we have.